Good morning. I'm Pastor Larry Kirkpatrick of the Fremont and Muskegon Seventh-day Adventist churches here in Michigan. I'd like to look with you at Psalm 129 today. Let me read it. Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say, Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. Yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed on my back. They made their furrows long. The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. Let all those who hate Zion be put to shame and turned back. Let them be as the grass on the housetops which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor he who binds sheaves his arms. Neither let those who pass by them say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. This is an interesting uh, psalm here. It looks like uh, it's about victory over the enemies of God. You know, sometimes we have kind of a false tolerance. We just think, oh, everything's fine. Uh, Just be friendly to every single person. Uh, But there are those who are out to destroy, to absolutely destroy. Notice here what we have. First verse 1, Israel afflicted from his youth. And, uh, and yet they've not prevailed against him. People who follow God have stayed strong. We have not turned aside or compromised because we've been afflicted. God is on our side and we'll stand for his truth. Uh, when we see verse 4, the Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. This is a reminder that God, God ultimately wins. God's selfless and loving and actually loving ways prevail in the end. And then you have the latter uh, verses here in this about the wicked. Let those who hate Zion, verse 5, be put to shame. Let them be turned back. Let them be like the grass on the, house, grass on the housetops. You know, the grass that just comes up briefly. It just, a bird comes by, drops a seed in there. It, it's, there's, there's no soil hardly in there. And so it, uh, it fades away very quickly. And the wicked will be like those. They're here and then they're gone. And this is what he's saying. But f- interesting is the latter, the last part, verse 8. Uh, don't let those who pass them by say the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We need to be careful that we don't just accept everything. Everything is not equal. Have you seen those coexist uh, license uh, bumper stickers uh, near license plates on cars? They've usually got a Jewish symbol, a Christian symbol, an Islamic symbol, and so on, various symbols like, hey, it's all the same stuff. No, I don't mean any anything vicious by it, but no, those are not all the same stuff. Each one is quite distinct, quite distinct. Maybe sometime we should talk about that. But I want us to look at this and realize that uh, we cannot bless evil. Uh, we don't have to be hate hating people, but we need to discern between what's right and what's wrong. In fact, this is one of the things that's missing today in our world, isn't it? There's a great failure to discern between right and wrong and to uplift the right and to uh, say, no, this, this evil is not something we're going to sustain. So let's go out there today into this world, not as a question mark about what's right and wrong. God will prevail, but we, we can't bless evil and wickedness. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, please bless your people Sometimes it's there's a lot of stress and a feeling that, you know, somehow this is not, there's just too much uh, depression, too many challenges along the way. Lord, we thank you that in the end you will prevail, and we thank you that the triumph of the wicked is just very brief. Please, Lord, help each person who's not on your side find their way home before it's too late. Lord, bless us and draw us close to your heart. We ask it in Jesus' name. Have a great day. Go out there and remember that Christians aren't question marks. We stand for what's right and not what's wrong. God bless you.